Maintaining an aquarium is something that intimidates a lot of new fish keepers, but it's not as bad as it seems. It's a pretty simple process, but there is a right and a wrong way to do it. So to help you along with that, here are 10 things you should know about maintaining an aquarium. Throughout this video, you're gonna hear us refer to bacteria a lot. When we say that, we're talking about denitrifying or beneficial bacteria. This is the bacteria in aquariums that converts harmful toxins like ammonia and nitrite to nitrate, which is much safer for the fish. Without this bacteria, your aquarium ammonia and nitrite will reach toxic levels and kill your fish. So this is one of the most important aspects of fish keeping and something you should definitely understand before you set up your first tank. Beneficial bacteria grows naturally on surfaces in your aquarium. You'll hear this referred to as the cycling process. We've done several videos on the cycling process, so take a look at it. It's kind of a lot to cover in a video like this. The filter on your aquarium is one of the most important aspects of your tank's life support system. Filters aren't something you can just set and forget. You've got to take care of them. Your filter isn't something that needs daily maintenance. It's actually better to not really mess with it a whole lot and just maintain it every three to four weeks. No matter what type of filter you choose to use, it's going to have some kind of mechanical filtration or sponges. The water flows through these sponges and it collects all that dirt and debris and all that gunky stuff that's in your tank that you don't want your fish to have to breathe in and it just it clogs it up and it makes it less effective. Some filters have replaceable cartridges and all you have to do is take it out and replace it. It's super simple and it's perfect for a beginner. But other more advanced filters like your canister filters and your sumps, they actually have larger sponges and you can take those out and you can clean them and reuse them. We recommend if you do decide to take your sponges out and clean them, you should do it in conditioned aquarium water. This means you'll just get a bucket, you'll put your aquarium water in it and then you'll clean your sponge in that. John will explain why it's important to do it this way in his water conditioner segment. Your filter will most likely contain some kind of a chemical filtration, most likely carbon, among other things. These chemicals are easy to maintain because all you have to do is replace them with new media and throw away the old ones. It's important to check your labels because sometimes you can use certain things a lot longer than others. The water in your home comes from one of two places. Either you have a well or you receive your water from the city or municipality that you live in. Water from a well is usually pretty clean, but if you receive your water from the city, the city is required to treat the water to rid it of any type of bacteria so that when you drink it or cook with it, you don't get your whole family sick. They use either chlorine or chloramine to kill all of this harmful bacteria in the water. So you remember when we talked about denitrifying bacteria being so important for your aquarium's health. If you're putting city water in your aquarium that has in it a chemical whose sole purpose is to kill bacteria, what do you think it's gonna do to that beneficial bacteria that we love so much? Well, it's gonna kill it, that's what it's gonna do. This is where water conditioners come in. Water conditioners do a lot of things, but one of the main purposes is to remove chlorine or chloramine from the water, which makes it safe to put into your aquarium so that it doesn't kill that beautiful beneficial bacteria that we love so much. Water conditioners also help to detoxify ammonia and nitrites in your aquarium, so they can be critical when you're going through the cycling process. Treat your water with water conditioners. Yes, even if you have water from a well. This is non-negotiable. You have to do it. Do you have a great idea for a topic for a 10 things episode in the future? Well, if you do, put it down in the comment section below. And if we use your topic, we'll give you credit in the video. Water changes are the most important thing that you need to do to take care of your aquarium. This is the process where you're gonna remove all that nasty water, that stale, dirty water, 
contaminate it with waste and poop and all that other stuff. And you're gonna replace it with nice, clean, crisp water. Treat it with water conditioners, of course. How much water you decide to take out of your aquarium is going to depend on how many fish you have in your aquarium, how often do you feed your fish, and when was the last time you actually did a water change. As a general rule, we actually recommend 15 to 25% of a water change weekly. Make this a routine. Don't let it be a problem and then do a water change. Weekly water changes are so important to your fish. When removing water, use a siphon, not only to get the water out of your tank, but also to get all of that waste and fish food and all the gunky stuff we were talking about out of your gravel. It's super important to make sure you get all of that nasty stuff out. This might seem like common sense, but when you're doing your routine maintenance on your aquarium, unplug your heater and your filter. Your filter has a motor in it that needs water flowing through it in order to run properly. If it drains out of water and it's sitting there running dry, it's eventually going to burn itself out. If the motor in your filter burns out, it makes that filter completely useless. And in most filters, you can't just replace the motor. So if it burns out, you're going to be running out to the pet store in an emergency situation and have to spend money on a brand new filter. Your heater can also burn itself out if it's not submerged fully in the water. You won't even realize this is happening until you start smelling something burning and then it's probably too late. When your heater isn't under the water, it's going to continue to heat up and that glass is going to get extremely hot. Then you're going to be doing your water change and add cooler water back to it. And when that cool water hits that super hot glass, boom. Look, it's, it's simple. Just unplug your filter, unplug your heater. You won't have to worry about any of this stuff. Let's move on. We've been talking a lot about beneficial bacteria and why it is super important for your aquarium. Well, many new fish keepers in the very beginning will actually sabotage their aquarium because they wanna to clean too much. They think cleaning is the absolute best thing to do. Overcleaning is not the best thing to do when you are starting up an aquarium. Yes, you can actually clean an aquarium too much. Who'd have thought? Remember, beneficial bacteria grows on surfaces. If you clean all of the surfaces in your tank, you're actually removing all that beautiful bacteria. Vacuuming out the gravel, squeezing out your sponges in aquarium water, and cleaning the glass in your aquarium is enough. Don't go overboard. This is another one that might seem like common sense, but you wouldn't believe how many stories I've heard of people using harsh chemicals to clean the inside and outside of their aquariums. Yes, I've even heard stories of people using bleach in an aquarium because there was an illness in the tank. Well, I figured I would put water conditioners in there and it would neutralize the bleach. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you don't need to use any harsh chemicals on your aquarium, not even Windex to clean the outside. The, you're gonna spray it and the overspray is gonna go over the top and well, and if you have a cleaning service, make them aware that they are not to clean the aquarium. They're gonna go through and they're just gonna do their job and they might end up doing their job a little bit too well. So make your maid service aware and just don't use harsh chemicals. It's that simple. I mean, I don't have a maid service. I'm just saying. You don't need a ton of stuff to maintain an aquarium, but there are some tools that make your job so much easier. First is good old fashioned buckets. Five gallon buckets are cheap and they're great to have around because there are different types of things like doing water changes or filling with aquarium water to rinse out your sponges like we talked about earlier. Next is a siphon hose. These are cheap and an absolute must if you wanna be successful in this hobby. Don't forget about the sponges. These are also important. And I'm not talking about the ones in your kitchen that you do dishes with. I'm talking about brand new ones. Don't be cheap. Next is nets. Depending on what kind of fish you keep, 
it's gonna depend on what kind of nets you get, whether you want the small ones or the large ones. I actually think it's good to have both. You never know when there's gonna be an emergency. So the next tool is an absolute must. It's so important, we're gonna do an entire segment just on that. A master test kit is something that you should buy when you buy your aquarium. It should be one of the first things on your list. Aquarium test kits measure ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate in your aquarium, and they can also measure the water's pH level. Testing your water is something you should absolutely do, particularly when your tank is going through the cycling process. You're gonna wanna know where things are and how far along in the process you are. After your cycle is done, you're still gonna wanna test your water regularly just to keep an eye on things and make sure nothing sneaks up on you. We've used the master test kit from API for decades and it's always been good to us, very reliable and we feel very accurate, but it's kind of expensive. If you can't afford a master test kit, go ahead and get the test strips where you dip them in there and everything is all on one strip. That's gonna be fine. They might not be as accurate as the master test kit, but it's better than nothing. An important aspect to maintaining your tank might sound silly to you, but it's actually very important. And that's just watch your fish. If you're like me, you're gonna spend a lot of time watching your fish. So it's super important to watch how they behave. Get to know their normal tendencies and their activity levels. One of the first signs that there is a problem in your aquarium is that your fish start acting abnormally. They might move around lethargic or maybe they're not even eating as much as normal. Whatever the case may be, you'll know if you keep an eye on your fish. If you recognize that this isn't normal, then it's time to react. Don't wait for fish to start dying. I guess what I'm trying to say is, Keep up with your aquarium, do the right thing by your fish, and you'll have your fish for a long time. Do the right thing though. Do you wanna live in a dirty house? Why would your fish wanna live in a dirty aquarium? So there you go, 10 things you should know about maintaining your aquarium. We upload new episodes of 10 things every single Sunday. So if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, found it entertaining, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss next week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you again next week with 10 more things.